Yeah, OK. Hello, I'm Jonathan Smart. I've been involved with writing for this particular module, Literacy for Professional Purposes, and I'm working with Mike here. I'm Mike Sheaf, uh, Senior Lecturer in Sociology, and uh, work alongside Jonathan on this uh, one. So, as you've been doing most of the work, uh, <laughs> do you want to give a bit of an outline about what you thought we've been able to put together in it? Well, yes. Um, I mean, I found it actually a very interesting exercise, um, particularly in terms of writing the material and imagining as I was writing it that I was actually um, a participating learner in the classroom. So I was thinking of it very much from that point of view and what would work with them and what wouldn't work with them. There's an interesting sort of duality about the whole thing as well because you have, on the one hand, you've got to have the OERs as generic um, standalone materials. On the other hand, um, you have the potential for using them with specific target groups. So um, getting the balance between um, the, the, the material you would use um, in the generic capacity as a standalone um, and the material that you would, would have, if you like, the value added sort of um, adaptations that you might use where you're delivering it in the classroom. And having those two sort of um, almost tensions in a sense, um, but very much um, resulting in a sort of having a, a clear focus about, uh, about what you're writing. So in other words, through following that sort of process, um, you weren't writing in a vacuum. You were actually um, imagining, if you like, and visualizing very strongly your intended audience and how they would receive what you were writing and how they would engage with it. Because that aspect sort of not seeing the audience was something we, we talked quite a lot about. And do you think we dealt with that? Yeah, because we were trying to address it through making a resource that would be flexible in how people could use it. Yes, and I mean, I think that um, I just found myself literally visualising an audience in front of me with, with a, a lot of the material that I was writing and imagining myself um, delivering it, imagining some form of interaction because, of course, from the teaching point of view, that's what's so crucial. Part of the, um, if you like, reward um, is the feedback that you, you have uh, from the, the group that you're teaching. So again, I would try to imagine it in an interactive way um, as much of the time as I possibly could. And that the fact that we weren't seeing the audience, because one of the things I think both of us I mean, felt was when you're in a classroom, you, or a lecture theatre, whatever it might be, you get a feeling for how the material is being absorbed or not, and you can vary the pace, you can go over an explanation, whereas this medium was, was not giving us that opportunity. So I mean, one of the ways we tried to address that was thinking about how we might combine text and audio material that the students could go back over again at their own pace. Absolutely. You have a, a lot of um, uh, classroom dynamics, if you like, that um, obviously doesn't apply when you're writing materials in this way and non-verbal cues that you you pick up from from students in the, in the audience so yes absolutely um th this meant that in writing it um one was all the time trying to um, imagine that one was actually if you like receiving some of these non-verbal cues and some of the dynamics of the classroom and trying to bring that to life and visualize it and one of the things we were just having a conversation about now was it would be useful to get some feedback or even some evaluation really from students who are using this resource because again you get that in a face-to-face -face setting and um, something we might want to pursue is to have what would be uh, a, a means of, of having that in this resource. Yeah, I, I could imagine um, feedback, for example, on two levels, the quantitative feedback. So, for example, as you have with um, reviews on Amazon, where you have the stars, the number of stars going across, and they vote on, on you know, if you like, you know, the quantitative side, how good it was. But also, perhaps, to supplement that with um, uh, focus groups so that you could get some forms of qualitative feedback so that you, you as, as you rightly say you really do need to have a, a good idea of how your target audience is receiving uh, the, the, the material that you've written. Well I think that probably covers the points uh, that we were thinking about. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? 
Um, I think we've probably covered um, what we discussed.